I don't care what you're facing. God can navigate you through the worst of times. God already knows what you're dealing with, but he's on the ship with you. Shed and heard it. The, the earth, they're going to be blessed. Why? Because I'm a man that what? Fear of God. He cleans us and let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God. Keep his what? Commandment. Do what? Fear God. Keep his what? Commandment. That's a person that have the reverential fear where? In their hearts. You and I better make up our mind. We gonna fear who? God. The glory is a Shia. It's arising, and you and I gonna have to walk in the what? Fear of God. Let me give you an example. In John 17, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John up to the mountain. There appeared Moses, and there appeared Elijah. The glory of God was so great, and Peter didn't know what to do with it. He said, "Well, let's build three tabernacles: one for Moses, one for Elijah, one for thee. Jesus." Hallelujah, amen. He didn't know what to do. He didn't know how, and after a while, amen, Moses disappeared. Elijah disappeared. And that Jesus' garments changed. Brighter than the noonday sun. You know what God was trying to tell him? Peter, it's all about me. Jesus, it's not Moses, it's not Elijah, it's me. And when he, when he, when he saw that, Peter said, Lord, it was good for us to what? Be here. But I'm going to tell you something. I believe Peter had a, but, but God, God knew what he was doing. But had he got really foolish kind of talking up there, he could not have stood in that kind of glory. He stepped into another world. Did you know that? He stepped behind the veil. I mean, the mountain was the mountain, baby. It was grass up there, rocks and everything in the natural. But he stepped beyond that. The fear of God will take you to places you have never gone in your life. What's coming to the church is eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard, but it's going to require the fear of the Lord to dwell in our hearts so God can let us step over into the glory land. Shout hallelujah. Peter, John, they saw something, baby. And I'll tell you something, they will never forget that. And what that should put produced in Simon's life after was a fear of the Lord. In the book of Acts, when, when Ananias and Sapphira died because they disrespected God, it should have created a what? The Bible said great fear came upon the church. I don't mean fear like, and, 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 you know, and intimidating or hurtful, but reverence. God is in the house. You have to be careful. Somebody's up here being ministered to, and the Holy Ghost is moving, and you sitting up here in the flesh. You laughing and talking, ha, ha, ha. baby, you're not reverencing God. Because if God is here, he's where you are. You think, because you, think, you don't have your mind up here, God ain't here. But amen, the earth is the Lord's. And the fullness of the earth, God dwells where? In the whole earth. So if God is back here, he's back here. So make sure that you respect when God is in the what? In the house. Well, what you going to eat for lunch? Man, it ain't about that. It's about God. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Giving. Come before his courts with what? Praise. Say, Lord, help me to have the fear of the Lord. I want you to know something. Upon being born again, fear did, the fear of the Lord did come in you. But it's up to you to maintain it. I say it's up to you to maintain that. Hallelujah. People, well, the Bible says in Malachi, bring ye all the tithe into the storehouse. If you're not paying your tithe, you're not walking in the fear of the Lord. Because if God requ requires that and you're not doing it, you're not walking in the fear of the Lord. It's get quiet on that, didn't it? Yeah. If you fear God, you're going to obey him. So those, the non-tithers don't have a reverence for God, hallelujah, as they claim they do. Because if you reverence God, you would give God what's due him. Now the non-tither, don't get mad, just change. Hallelujah. I said Hallelujah. To be honest with you, I'm afraid not to give to God, not in an intimidating way, but I'm, I'm persuaded that can't nobody bless me more than God. So since can't nobody bless me more than God, I'm going to honor God and reverence him and bring what he told me to bring him. 
Praise God. You know, what was it, Cain and Abel? Hallelujah. Cain brought an offering, but Abel brought the what? The best. Why? He respected and reverenced who? God. Well, how is that? Because Abel brought an offering with blood. Cain brought something from the fruit of the ground. He didn't give God. See, reverence would cause you to give God your what? Your best. You missed that. I said, reverence in God will cause you to give God not, not, not crumbs, but your what? Your best. And the reason a lot of people don't prosper and do well, and very good people, is because they don't honor God, so you don't give God the opportunity to honor you back. Give, and it what? Shall be given. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Shall men give where? Into your bosom. You remember the man that had a big crop? Man, he, his, his, I mean, his crop just exploded. And he thought to himself, what am I going to do? The reverence, rich of fear of God would have said, look how God has blessed me. Now God, who do you want me to bless? But selfishness, self-will said to him, listen now, I'm going to tear this barn down. I'm going to build me a bigger barn. He did it. And he died. Wisdom will keep you alive. Selfishness will cut your life off early. Say, I haven't been called to live selfishly. We've been called to be helpers one to who? Another. A selfish person can be a dangerous person. Houses on fire, they get themselves out before they will you. A person with the fear of God, amen, they care about their life, but if they can help somebody else get out, they'll get them out first. Why? The love of God is in the what? Fear of God. Shout hallelujah. Amen. The fear of God, the reverential fear of God won't allow you to accuse God foolishly. I don't know why God didn't do that. I don't know why. No, we're not doing that. What I don't understand, I respect. And God, I found this out. There have been some things in my lifetime, I've been in ministry for quite some time, that I asked God about. He didn't answer it. He told me he wasn't going to answer it. He told me to move on. You see, God's God. He's not man. He's God. You tell the difference? Hallelujah. I'm supposed to fear God because the Bible requires me to fear him. I am to take my time and, and examine my life and see whether or not if I even be where I am in the faith. Nobody's here to beat you up, uh, beat you down, but you ought to take a good look at your life. And you ought to dis 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 disciple or discern how is my life? Where am I with God? You can't club it and claim it. No, listen, baby, listen, listen. And the Bible said, come out from where? Among them. And be you one. Separated, said the Lord. Romans 12 says, I beseech you, brother, and therefore by the what? Mercies of God that you present your what? Your body as a living sacrifice. Holy, say that word, holy. holy. And acceptable unto who? God, which is your what? Reasonable service. And be not what? Conformed. But be what? Transformed. The power of the word that's being delivered now is to bring about what? Transformation. If you were not walking in the fear of God, by the time we close, you ought to have already made up your mind. God, I'm sorry. God, help me. Yeah, I'm going to take better care about how I walk. Say amen to that. Hallelujah. I said, honey, oh, shine. Hallelujah. You know, I'm about to see, honey, oh, shine. I hear you, Lord. I'm about to see. People are married, just beating on each other, slapping one another, talking ugly to one another. And come to church, just like ain't nothing happened. I hear the Spirit of the Lord said, the eyes of the Lord is in every place. Beholding the good and the evil. God know what you're doing. You don't try to save your face and lose your soul. You want to look good with man, but don't look good with God. No, I want to look good with God. What man thinks, I could care less. But what God thinks... I care about what God says. Shout hallelujah. Say he cares about what God says. You have your Bible, turn me to Psalms 89. Hallelujah. Say walking in the fear of the Lord. Remember that song? Oh, it's a high way to heaven. None shall walk up there but the pure in heart. Oh, it's a high way to heaven 
oh, walking up the king highway. And that song goes on to say, amen. Uh, hallelujah. Well, you know the song. You ain't going to go there if, you, uh, if you're not upright. You're not going to heaven if you're not willing to walk out. Upright. Psalms 89, you have your Bible, verse 6 and 7. Say, say, say read the word. For who in heaven can be compared unto the Lord? Who among the sons of the mighty can be likened unto the Lord? God is greatly to be feared. Where? In the assembly of the saints. Where are we now? In the assembly of the saints. Now listen, listen. Not only the, uh, the assembly of the saints, but look what it says. And to be had in reverence of all them that are about him. That means save or unsaved. You're unsaved. You ought to have some reverence for God, some respect for God. It's one thing to come to church and you're not willing to be saved, but you ought to respect where you are. You ought to have, you ought not be making fun of folks that may be shouting and dancing and running. That's a bad thing. That's a dangerous thing. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. All of us in here should have came in here with what? The fear of God in our life. And I said, you don't get ready when you walk through these doors. You, amen. You, the fear ought to begin when you got out to bed this morning. And as you're getting prepared, because you don't get prepared when you walk in here, you prepare before you get here. You enter into his gates with what? Thanksgiving. You ought to have that in your heart before you get here. And God requires that we give him what? Thanks. The Bible says give thanks for this is the what? Will of God. It's the will of God that we give what? Thanks. Shout hallelujah. Some of us don't have the fear of God. We use prophetic the word. We, we'll do we'll, we'll that. God name in a minute. I, let me say it like that. We'll damn that God name in a minute. No fear. Don't you know God? Because strike you now while you damn his name. The only reason you're alive right now is somebody's interceding for you that you know nothing of. Paul said, I am what I am by the what? Grace of God. The grace of God causes you to what? Fear God. There are some things I'm not going to do. Not because I buy CK and there are shot. Not because I'm better than somebody, but because the word said, don't do it. Touch not. Taste not. Handle not. The unclean thing. I'm going to tell you something. The fear of God going to make us give up some stuff. We got some things in our house we may need to go through and check out. Glory to God. Some things on our television. Channels. I know you don't want to talk to me. Amen. I want the glory. How bad do you want the what? Glory of God. God's glory is not going to sit among iniquity. Say, clean it up. Shout hallelujah. How are you going to win the loss? Amen. And you don't have the fear of God yourself. The world know when you fear God. They know when you reverence God. They also know when you're playing games. Well, I'll tell you in a minute, they have some discernment. Shout hallelujah. The Lord know how I treat my wife. He's there 24-7. His eyes is in every place. He knows how I talk to her. Some of us don't know how to talk to our spouses to save our life. You bless you alive. Because what you don't realize, that ain't just your wife, that's God's child. And you think, well, I'm just, I ain't nobody but a woman. No, no, that's, that's God's child. If she saved, that's God's child. And the Bible says, touch not. My Lord, and neither do my servants any, any harm. Shout hallelujah. Just ask God, say, Lord, help me to have the fear of God. What do I look like smacking my wife? Are you smacking your husband? He's the head of your house. Honor him. Respect him. <laughs> now come on now. How done the old shot? Yeah, I know y'all want me to make it a WWW, but I ain't, we ain't going to have no WWWs in here. Uh, ain't, no, ain't nobody fighting nobody. When you look at the life of Jesus, amen, he could have called down legions of angels. He did not. Peter and John was known as the sons of thunder. Man, they wanted to call down fire out of heaven. And I want you to know they could have done it. That's what the church misses in that passage. They had the ability to call it down. But Jesus said, you know not what spirit you are of. 
When you have de de destruction towards somebody in your heart, you do not possess the fear of God. When you have a lying tongue, a, a whole mocking tongue. What's a whole mocking tongue? It's a tongue that's pursuing that. When you have a gossiping tongue, don't know when to shut up. Man, I'll I tell you something. I'm, I, I really don't like pretensions. I'd rather you just be who you are. I can deal with you. Your flaws, I can deal with my flaws. I can deal with yours. But don't, don't, don't play that. Don't, don't, you know, don't play little orphan Annie in public, but Jezebel at home. No, no, just be real. Touch your neighbor and say, be real. Out in public, you know, Pastor, oh, I'm just, mm, just, mm. And behind, behind, behind the door, man, you cut me down every which way. I ain't got no legs on you behind the door. Now, now, am I okay? I'm okay. But you are not. I love you enough, well, I don't want you to destroy yourself. For by your own words, you're going to be justified. By your own words, you're going to be condemned. So watch your words. Somebody said, praise the Lord. Do that in the fear of God. Not just because I said it. You know, when you say, I worship you, let, let your worship be in the what? Fear of God. God wants to worship this hour. I can tell you that by the Holy Ghost. Yes, we were worshiping God this morning. I said, God, you're getting what you desire. But God wanted to come from a pure heart, right spirit. I'm like, this is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. And it's true. But your heart not in it. I will rejoice. I will rejoice. Look at them, baby. They can't even say, listen to me. And be glad. You're telling somebody beside you. And be glad. They need me up there. No. We need you at the altar. Say, somebody said, preach the word. Actually, I'm trying to teach you today how we can come up and be what? Pleasing unto God. I want my, my worship to be what? Pleasing unto who? God. I want it to be like a sweet smelling savor. I mean, I sing where well, I cut up by my wife can't sing, but I'll tell you, in the eyes of God, man, her heart is pure. And though she sound like Dolly Parton, amen, it'd be all right with God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Brother Jay. Hallelujah. She'd be at home around there, man, be just worshiping God. Woo! She don't be humming. Her humming is off. But, but see, what I know is, and what I keep my hand, I'm cutting up right now. But, I'm, but what I know is, man, it means something to God. So you better learn, find you a praise. Find your worship and offer it unto God. In the what? Fear of God. Say, I'm a worshiper. These guys on these keyboards and organs, amen, they better be doing it in the fear of God. Don't let it become just a job. You done missed it. Don't let just church become a habit. You done missed it. We're not religious people. We're righteous. Holy Ghost feel. God loving, God fearing people. That's what we're supposed to be. Say, honey, old shot. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hold on, my son. Hmm. What did I say? Verse 7, I said, God is, it says, God is greatly to be feared in the assembly of the saints. The assembly of the saints. I said, more is coming. But right now, I'm getting instructions how to entertain, how to host the greater glory. I'm going to walk in the fear of the Lord. Hallelujah. You've got to be careful. Somebody's shouting. They look like they get wild. They need to sit their tail down. That's what you're saying in all these. Amen. But you don't know their heart. So watch that. Who assigned you to, to judge their worship? They're not giving. If, they, if somebody's off as the devil, then you know to pray, not complain. Pray me out of that. No, you can't complain me out of nothing. You got to pray me out of something. 
husband and wife, you can't complain to each other out of what y'all don't like about each other. Pray it out. Love it out. Amen. Just keep loving. Love and kindness have I what? Drawn you. You don't like some of you that's complaining, 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 and then you get ugly with your word. Stop that. And say, Lord, let the fear of the Lord govern my conversation. And what it'll do is what you don't like, it'll shut you up before you get your own self in trouble. And then it'll allow you, amen, to pray to some righteous things where whoever is, is not in quite in line, God will get it in line. And the next thing you know, you begin to praise that person. Lord, I thank you for my husband. Lord, I thank you for my wife. I don't understand husband and wife that don't, don't honor each other with praise. A woman needs to be told she's doing a good job. Appreciate you taking care of the children. Thank you for cleaning the house. Thank you for cooking. Amen. They made have cook something you didn't want, but amen, they cooked. Now, I don't come home and tell my wife I don't like what she cook. I've never done it. Now, she may cook some food before she cook and say, like shrimp, I don't eat shrimp. But she says, baby, I know you don't like shrimp. What do you want? Well, that's honoring me. But I don't go home and say, I don't like what you cooking. Man, I don't do that. Because, see, she don't have to cook. Hallelujah. She can go in there and get a piece of bologna and two pieces of bread, give you a glass of Kool-Aid, and she done done what the Bible says. She done said something before you. Then you all mad. I don't want no baloney. No, you didn't appreciate what she was doing. What are these women talking up? You hear me? They talking up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Men, be careful. If your wife didn't cook what you like, just go in there and say, baby, I sure appreciate that, but I think I might want to try something. Is that okay with you? She'll say, yeah, fine, because you're fixing it. But don't hurt her heart because she done labored. And tomorrow you come to hunger as a bull. What, where them beans at? I didn't tell you to throw it away. Yesterday you didn't want it, but today you want it. That's why a wise woman, don't throw the stuff away. Don't get mad. I ain't cooking it at all. Put it in a, in a, in a whatever container. He'll be back. Men can't, most men can't cook. It's rare, Brother Larry back there. But not, not many of us. And if, if, man, if it's in there, you know how to warm it up. And even some men can cook. They'll eat it, they're going to eat it because they don't want to go through the labor. So keep the fear of the Lord in your house. So when others come over, they, they'll find the what? Peace of God where? In your house. When I said amen, the fear of God will cause you how to attend church. The fear of the Lord calls you to how to attend your job. Your job say 8 to 5, you're going to be there before 8. You respect, you honor what they want. And that's on your job. How much more should we do God? See, our problem is when God gives us the liberty to choose, we mess it up. So on the job, you ain't got no choice. I mean, you, I mean, you can either be there or you're not there at all. Well, with God, he keep loving you. And see, because he keep loving, we think we just keep being uh, uh, disrespectful. No. That's why some people never prosper. How can God show you favor when you don't honor him? And, he, and I think it's in Malachi, God said, if I be your father, where's my honor? You're offering this stuff, you're inviting the, the sheriffs, the princes, all these fine people, where's my honor? When you have the fear of God, you honor God. Shout hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Somebody come over to your house. Amen. Years ago, we were going to somebody's house, particularly older people. They, you know, they didn't have no lie. They say, would you like a glass of cold water? They'd offer you a glass of cold water. That's a, that was a man of honor. They had the fear of God. You, amen. Or, or you know, hallelujah. Uh, some folk had cow. You want some glass of milk. I didn't want no cow milk. I mean, all milk come from a cow, but I just didn't want it. But I remember how they were, my daddy could go over there and the lady said, let me fix you a glass. He had us over there clean up a lady's yard. She couldn't afford to clean it up. So we cut the bushes and trimmed it and everything. Me and my brother, we looking for some money. My daddy had us over there, and he, he'd help a little bit, get us started, and he'd leave. Then we got through. Uh, he, before he leaves, she said, can let me give you a, a cold glass of lemonade? And my daddy said, thank you. Now, she didn't say to us boys, because in our mind, we were just children. But my daddy was grown. And he, he'd take that big old cold. Man, they could make some lemonade back then. It ain't just funny stuff you get now. 
all this synthetic stuff. It was real. Amen. Real sugar. Hallelujah. He drank that big old glass, man. He said, thank you. Much, you know, he said, much obliged. Y'all young folks, you know, y'all think I'm multiplying now, right? <laughs> he said, much obliged. Thank you. Sister so, so, Mohead, you from him? No, you never heard much obliged. I knew it. I knew it. People, you know, Southern, that's Southern talk, right? Hey, how many of y'all ever heard much obliged? Hold your hands up. All y'all old. Put your hands up. <laughs> No, no, you do something for they say much obliged. That was the way of saying, thank you. Even that older people now, if you talk to them, they'll say, much obliged. Hallelujah. Mother, Mother Arthur says one of them old words. Let me close with this. Go with me to uh, 2 Chronicles 5 and 14, I believe. Yeah. Hallelujah. Well, excuse me. I'm going to change that. Go to Isaiah 29 and verse 13. Isaiah. I know I'm preaching a little different today. Hallelujah. Amen. I just want to feed you so that we can, we can live better. Are you there? Now this is power. This is strong. I'm going to read it. Uh, start at verse... Uh, 10. For the Lord has poured out upon you the spirit of a deep sleep and has closed your eyes, the prophets and your rulers, the seers hath he covered. And the vision of all is become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed, which men deliver to one that is learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. And he said, I cannot, for it is sealed. Look at verse 12. It says in 13, And the book is delivered to him that is not learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. And he said, I am not learned. Now look at verse 13. Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth, and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the precepts of men. In other words, the fear that man has come from the instructions of man rather than the scripture. And the culture today honors, our culture today honors what man said. More than what God says. In other words, we worship the creature more than the creator. That's a dangerous thing. I said that's a dangerous thing. Tell your neighbor, watch your mouth. Go with me. Let's see. Praise God. Thank you for putting that on the screen. And now I'll try to close with this. Uh, go with me to Isaiah 33, verse 5 and 6. Are you there? Though the Lord is very great and lives in heaven, he will make Jerusalem his, the home, his home of justice and righteousness. Next verse. In that day he will be your sure foundation, providing a rich store of salvation, wisdom, and knowledge. The fear of the Lord will be your what? Treasure. Say the fear of the Lord. It be my treasure. So the fear of the Lord will produce what? Increase. Not only naturally, but in your spirit, in your body, in your mind. The fear of God is what allows you to choose what's right from what's wrong. Some of us need to cut off some relationship. Cut them off. Why? You fear God. What fellowship have light with darkness? None. You can't party with somebody at a club and, and shout in the church and talk about, we all love God. That's a lie. The fear of the Lord will make you choose. <laughs> Say, I want the fear of the Lord. Why? It will be our what? Treasure. Hallelujah. I'll close with this. I said that three times. I, wait a minute. I didn't say what this. Go to 2 Chronicles 5 and 14. And this will be the end of it right here. So you'll feel better. 2 Chronicles 5 and what? 14. Actually, I could read all of it, but it's a time where Solomon had dedicated the temple and the glory of the Lord had come in. Hallelujah. Got my verse up there, brother. Hallelujah. He had dedicated the temple and the glory of the Lord filled that place. 
it says, and the priests could not continue their service.